everyone, my name is Roberto Montemoro and I'm an implementation consultant here at VistaView Solutions. And welcome to today's Brain Boost. Today we will cover how to create a custom depreciation method in SAP Business by Design. In order to do this, we need to enter our Business Configuration Work Center. This should be available to your system administrator. And then go under our Implementation Projects view. I'll then highlight my implementation project and open my activity list. If this is your first time doing this, we need to add the task to our project. And to do that, I'll open up the drop down, select all activities, and search for depreciation with an asterisk at the end. Here we can see depreciation methods and under the in projects column, if this is your first time doing this, this should say no. That means it is not in your project and it's not available for you to edit. So in order to add to the project, you highlight the row and click the add to project button. I've already done this. So my in project status is set to yes, and I'm able to open it up and begin editing. Here we're presented with two options, either edit depreciation method or copy template and create custom depreciation method. Our first step is to copy the template and create a custom depreciation method. It's important to note that you should check to see if the depreciation method you are looking for has already been created by SAP, but it's just been assigned to a country that you do not do business in. Uh, SAP creates a bunch of uh, default depreciation methods, but assigns them to specific countries. So there's a chance that the depreciation method you're looking for has been created. It's just assigned to a different country. And if that's the case, uh, it can easy, easily be added to your system and it'll be available to you in your drop down menus. If you need help with that, please reach out to one of your VistaView um, representative or myself, and we'd be happy to help you. The depreciation method I'm trying to create today is a straight line from acquisition value to zero starting on the first day of the following month. And I can confirm that that is not an SAP default depreciation method. Therefore, we need to create a custom depreciation method. First step is to open up the dropdown and select which template we want to copy from. Here we can see we have straight line depreciation and declining balance depreciations that are all slightly different. So it's important to read the description for the one I want to create today. I'm going to use the straight straight line depreciation based on acquisition costs and planned useful life. Next step is to the assign depreciation method key. This is the ID that represents the depreciation method. And if you hover over the question mark, it says that it needs to be between uh, one and six characters and it has to start with the letter Z. So I'll go with Z002. And here we assign a depreciation method description. Again, hovering over the question mark, it says there's a 60 character limit. So I'll have to use some acronyms to, uh, to get my description in. So I'll go with a straight line from acquisition value to zero. Start first day next month. So when those three fields are filled in, we can hit copy depreciation method template and move on to the next step. Next step, we go under our edit depreciation methods. And this will give you a list of all the depreciation methods that are currently in your system. The ones that SAP have created are first and the custom ones are at the bottom. Here we can see the Z002 is the one we just created. So I'll highlight that row. And we have uh, the parameters that could be assigned to this depreciation method down here at the bottom half of the screen. I like to start on the far right tab, which is depreciation parameters. 
here we can assign a period control method. And this is how we assign the depreciation uh, start method. So if you open up this drop down, you can see there's 22 different options here with uh, different codes and very short descriptions. Um, if you want more information on these period control methods, a quick and easy tool is to just open up your help center on the top right corner here. Type in appreciation method. Hit enter. And the first resource here that you see, depreciation methods, if you click that, it opens up an SAP web page. It has a ton of extra information on the different period control methods. You see here in this column, there's one, the 003 period control method. It gives you an example and more information. And on the left-hand side here, you can see which depreciation methods are assigned to which country by default. Jumping back to business by design, I'm gonna close my help center and we can start customizing uh, the depreciation method. So the one I'm going to use is the 11, 11, 11, 11 at next period start because I want it to begin depreciation on the first day of the following month. This enable temporary shutdown checkbox. So if you have this checked off, it allows any fixed asset that is assigned to this depreciation method to be temporarily put out of service and therefore not be pulled in a depreciation run. And on the right hand side here, we have our salvage value, depreciation percentage, work shift dependent depreciation rule, base value reduction, salvage value percentage. These are the, the fields where you can set that up. I don't need that for my example, so I'm going to skip over them. Next, we have our assignment to accounting principles. And this is where we assign this depreciation method to all accounting principles that we are currently using in our system. In this system, I have four, uh, four accounting principles. So I'm gonna assign all four of them to this depreciation method. And to do that, you just add a row, open up the dropdown and click the accounting principle. Finally, we have our calculation parameters tab. Here we have four boxes to check off. Only three are available to us as this one here is grayed out. So I'll just quickly go over what they mean. The first one here, acquisition only in fiscal year of capitalization allowed. So if this is checked off, it'll only allow you to perform additional acquisitions uh, to fixed assets in the first fiscal year. Next box here, full depreciation in short and fiscal year. So if this is checked off and you're in a short, short and fiscal year, um, full depreciation will be recorded for the fixed asset that is assigned to this depreciation method. And the last one here, depreciation period to exact date. If this is checked off, uh, depreciation will uh, begin on the first day of acquisition. So on the same day that you acquire the asset, is the same day that depreciation starts. With that being said, I'm not going to assign any of these features to this depreciation method, so I can hit save and close. This sometimes takes a couple seconds. And once it's complete, it'll bring you back to the screen and we can close it. Now, if you want to assign it to a specific fixed asset class, you search up fixed asset. Right, go under your fixed asset class, hit open. Under edit fixed asset class, We, we can highlight an asset class and scroll down to the bottom here. And here's where you assign your depreciation method. So if I open up this dropdown and I scroll to the bottom, we can see 
Z001 straight line from acquisition value to zero start on the first day of the next month is available to us. So if we assigned it to this fixed asset class in the future, when you purchase a fixed asset and assign it to this fixed asset class, that depreciation method will be the default depreciation method. And finally, if you want to add this new custom depreciation method to a fixed asset that's already in the system, we just go into our fixed asset class, sorry, fixed asset work uh, view, select the fixed asset you want to change the depreciation method for. So I'll highlight this row, hit edit, go into the master data. Under asset valuation, we can see currently it's set to straight line from acquisition value to zero with a depreciation start date of December 1st. If I open up the drop down, we see our custom depreciation methods right here at the bottom. So I'll select it and then I'll change our depreciation date to the first day of the following month. This has to be done manually if, uh, if you're changing it on an already existing fixed asset. If you have multiple accounting principles, you have to assign it to each accounting principle. Then you hit save. Sometimes it takes a moment to refresh. So I like to close out and enter the asset once again. And under the values tab, under depreciation overview, we can see that previously it would have had a depreciation amount for 2021, 12, but now that we've changed it, the first depreciation will occur on January 1st, 2022. So that being said, that it's the end of uh, this week's brain boost. Thanks for joining me. And I look forward to doing more of these in the future. Have a great day.